just when we see progress and it appears the pandemic is winding down, you turn on your TV, you catch your favorite news show, and it's not always good news. The Delta variant, for example, is exploiting weaknesses and taking advantages of holes in our defenses. And there are other variants as well. So Patty and I are going to invite some guests to discuss this topic. And Patty, good to be with you on BioTalk once again. How important is this topic, Patty, about variants? I think it's really important. It's one of those things that, you know, right now people people are tired. They want to get reopened. They want to get back to what they think of as normal, whatever that would be. They keep going back in their minds to pre-pandemic. Um, I think the concern, well, it's not, I think, the concern that's out there right now is that we are jumping to wide open. And with jumping to wide open, there, you know, if we're all vaccinated, you know, that's probably a good thing from a standpoint of we're all vaccinated, we have a protection. Um, there is the concern of those who either cannot get vaccinated um, for medical reasons or that have chosen not to. And if you go to certain areas of the country or certain areas of the world, their percentages may not be where they, where um, let's say public health professionals want to see that and they're vulnerable. Well, this is a very important topic. Obviously we'll learn a lot as we talk to our experts and yourself. We have Paul Meachin and Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner who both work on GBAC. So let's, let's get into this. What does it really mean, these variants, and how does it affect us? And maybe, Gavin, we'll start with you. So right now, Jeff, um, it's still COVID-19 disease. It's still the SARS-CoV-2 virus, but that virus has changed a little bit. And we use, we're using this term now, variants. What the variants mean for everyone that's out there, not just the cleaning industry, but everyone else, it means it takes less virus, less stuff to get infected. And that's what we're seeing from these variants is that you'll hear words like more transmissible, more transmissible, more highly infectious. No, it's just less virus that gets you infected. Yeah. Paul, what do you think? No, I agree with Gavin. The thing is that we have to keep understanding is they're, they, they've been giving them letter names, alpha, beta, delta, gamma. They're not necessarily discrete and it's not gonna stop that as long as we have a population that's not adequately vaccinated, and in no country in the world do we have a population that's really adequately vaccinated, that this will continue. So the, the, the strategies that we've been using for the past year are going to be needed for a considerable length of time. And that includes enhanced cleaning. Yeah, and I think, you know, Jeff, one of the things that's concerning is that every time we, you know, uh, every time a new variant is identified, it's an, there's unknown to it. And it may not be something that you have to worry about, but the next one um, that will come may be something that's more virulent, more deadly, uh, may have more impact on younger generations. We just don't know. And so that's, the, that's one of the concerns as well that we are looking at. And, you know, Paul is absolutely correct. You know, people, while we have to really pay very close attention to the air, which we know, um, you know, those of us who've been in research for many years, we knew this in the very beginning. It was one of those things, well, yeah, it's a coronavirus. Of course it's airborne. But on the other hand, we also know, and you have to protect surfaces. And if live virus is on that surface and you touch your, you know, eyes, nose and mouth, you have the potential of becoming infected as well. I have a question that I hope there's an answer to. I was, I heard on the news this morning, uh, of course, this is what, July 7th, it's, it's summertime and uh, things can change by tomorrow, who knows. But they were talking about if you have your vaccine, you're safe, most, most likely you're safe. But if you get like the Delta variant or, or the coronavirus or COVID-19, you could carry it to someone in your household who's not vaccinated or a child who isn't eligible yet for vaccination. How does that happen? If I'm vaccinated, how do I pick that up? Paul, will you, do you want to start? Sure. The first thing to keep in mind is no vaccine is perfect. And so with the original strain of the coronavirus, we were talking with the RNA vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, roughly 97% efficacy. But that did mean that on rare occasions, a person could actually become infected and infectious, but the amount of virus in their body was relatively low. What, we, what a recent Israeli study showed with the Delta variant 
is that there is actually a reduced uh, effectiveness of the vaccine, uh, roughly 65%, which now means a non-trivial part of the vaccinated population could indeed become infected. But what's been shown so far is that the amount of virus that that person would have is significantly lower than a person who's unvaccinated. There was a, one report in, in the paper that I think I saw it, uh, this morning that suggested that so one person who was vaccinated has been hospitalized with, a, with the coronavirus. But think about that. There were 11,000 cases in this country alone yesterday. What made the news was one person who was vaccinated was hospitalized. So instead of looking at it as like, oh my goodness, if I'm vaccinated, I'm at risk, you should be looking at it the other way around. If you're an unvaccinated, you are at risk. And you're at risk of, of spreading this to the vaccinated population, low frequency, but it's possible. Gavin, your thoughts on it? Yeah, this is this is a really important point that everyone has to understand. From a, the GBAC team, we've talked about what you know, what makes you sick? How do you get sick? And we talked about protecting your holes, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Now we have to move towards what is a vaccine? And vaccines aren't meant to prevent infection. And this is what people really think that they think this is the magic silver bullet. I get the vaccine. I'm 100 percent. I'm Wonder Woman or I'm Superman. No, you're not. Vaccines aren't meant to prevent infection. Their strength is preventing infection from making you sick with severe symptoms. Their strength is in preventing you from going to hospital and their strength in, in the unlikelihood is preventing them from you dying. That's what the vaccine's for. And what we are understanding now is that even if you're fully vaccinated, that's that definition of fully vaccinated, two weeks after your second dose of Pfizer or, or Moderna, or even two weeks after that one dose of the Janssen Johnson Johnson vaccine, you can still be infected by this virus. And this is getting back to our conversation on the variants. We're finding some of these variants, like Paul and Patty were talking about the Delta variant, for example, is infecting um, people that have been fully vaccinated, but they're not going to hospital. So it's really hard for us to say, this is what we know in the lab, but let's look at what we know in the real world. And in the real world right now, in many countries, not just the US, but other countries like the UK, the United Kingdom, the people that are going to hospital are the unvaccinated. The people that are still getting infected but not going to hospital are those that are fully vaccinated. So really important that if you're fully vaccinated, you can still get infected. Your symptoms, we think at this stage, will be less, less likely to go to hospital, but there's still a, an ability, there's still a possibility that when you're infected, even fully vaccinated, you can transmit this virus to others that are either vaccinated or, or unvaccinated. And this is where the, the real critical thinking right now is how do we protect the unvaccinated within our society? Because we just don't know um, when we turn up who's been vaccinated and who's been who's unvaccinated. I don't think I like this information. I was <laughs> when I got those two shots, I was uh, thinking I was more protected, but I get your point. Uh, you can still get you can still get something. Patty, what do you think? Yeah, I think that there's a there's a there are some things that we've we've talked about all along and that is is that you know, the vaccine is a a very important part of the whole scheme for our public health preparedness and protection. And we know it. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about it. But the, our behaviors also are really important. Um, I think it was the Louisiana governor just yesterday uh, came out and they have in the state, I think their, their percentages are only at about 30%. And he publicly came out and said, all right, folks, we need to step up to the plate and go get vaccinated. And, um, and that's a really important message because it's, it's as Gavin indicated and Paul indicated, it's not just to protect yourself from getting severely ill. It is to protect your family members, your neighbors, and those around you as well. And we're at that critical piece of that, you know, time frame, that tipping point, uh, you might say, to say, we are going to get open, we are going to stay open. And part of that being stayed open is what we can do, um, get our vaccinations, maintain cleaning, sanitization, and disinfection, pay attention to our indoor air quality, and, you know, really look at hygienically clean um, and, and being prepared from a vaccination standpoint. Yeah, Ohio State University in Columbus, where I live, announced uh, last night that they're going to have full uh, stadium capacity for their games. We're talking 100,000 vaccinated or unvaccinated. They're not going to monitor that and tailgating. 
So the look of shock on your faces, what do you think about that and these variants coming out? Let's start with you, Gavin. Jeff, I'm fully vaccinated. I've never changed my behavior. Whether I'm indoors around people or I'm outdoors in a crowded situation, I don't know whether those the other people have been vaccinated or they're unvaccinated. So I've never changed my behavior. And the way that the ISSA GBAC team works with unknowns, when something is unknown, you do what's best, you do what's evidence-based, what's science-based to protect you and others. So right now I'll continue to wear my mask. I continue to wash my hands with soap and water. And I continue to ensure that, that I, I'm looking after myself as well as others, even when I've got so many unknowns. So do I think the US federal government, the Centers for Disease and Prevention, the CDC will reinstate masks? No, I don't. But will I continue to wear masks? Yes, I will, because there's just too many unknowns to deal with. Yeah, I'm really getting tired of these things myself, but I get I get that. You gotta gotta be smart. What do you think, Paul? So I'm a little more liberal than than my colleague Gavin. Uh, in Maryland, nearly 70% of the adults over 12 have received at least one dose of the vaccine. And so I'm fairly confident in small group settings that I don't need to wear a mask, but I like Gavin, I don't want, I don't dine in at a restaurant. I do not go to a closed facility um, and, I, and I go to a big box store. I'm wearing a mask as well. The probability that everyone I'm around is, is vaccinated is relatively high in the area that I live. If I was in a different part of the country where say you're 30%, 35%, your risk changes dramatically. And then I would be going back to what Gavin was talking about, wearing a mask in public all the time. Yeah, and, and I'm right there with Paul um, and Gavin from a standpoint of, I, I, you know, it's getting back to doing a risk assessment. And that's one of those terms that people get really kind of afraid about because they're not quite sure. When you're uncertain, wear your mask. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. If you're uncertain, you're getting on an, in, on an elevator, um, I put my mask on, um, no matter where I'm at. And, you know, if I'm outside, I'm probably not going to have my mask on. If I'm in a, a, a small setting where I feel confident as Paul did, I know that I'm vaccinated. I also know who I'm around when I'm not vaccinated. And that's, I think, like really critical. If I had a family member that was immunocompromised, I would probably be in bubble wrap. Um, you know, per, really, <laughs> um, and understand your situation and take control of it. That's the one thing we have is we have control of our own situation and our own personal behaviors. And that I think is a critical thing to take, to take really seriously here. Yeah. The other thing about Ohio state, just to, you know, okay, I'm a Michigan fan and a Texas and I'm a Georgia fan. Okay. You know, what can I say? Um, just because of family stuff. Um, I was a, an environmental health and safety um, head of EHS for Emory University and, and was the uh, president of SHEMA, Campus Safety, Health and Environmental Management Association. And I remember the conversations about safety and environmental protection um, when we talked about tailgating and the one that came up was Ohio State <laughs> and the Michigan games. They have, you said 100,000 people in the stadium they predict about 500,000 people in tailgating. That is a lot. And those are those types of situations that we really need to be very, pay very close attention to. Yes, all good information. You know, like we've all said, we're, we're vaccinated, but uh, we could still carry the virus. I know I was at an event recently and I talked to two people who according to the requirements of the building should have had their masks on, come and find out they're not vaccinated. And they were very, um, yeah, I don't have it yet. They're very casual about it. And it, it, it bothered me to some level, but you know, we, we can wear our own masks and protect ourselves. Great information from all three of you on that. Anything else to add, Patty, before we wrap this up? I think we need to just be very aware that we're heading into the fall and the winter. I mean, I know we're in the midst of enjoying summer and everything, but you're going to have schools starting up. We're gonna have um, people starting to go back to work uh, more and more. You're going to see trade shows start opening up. You're gonna see a lot more, what I would call mass gatherings happening right at the start of our normal flu season. And the concern that we have, um, that a lot of people have is, what is it gonna look like 
this fall and winter, when we start looking at potentially a flu, uh, whatever the flu season is going to look like this year, uh, you know, if the variants start having um, more, um, I would say, impact on us, uh, and what's that going to look like? It's really not a time to relax our behaviors. It's really a time to say we're going to stay open, and to stay open safely, we need to pay attention to our behaviors and and um, what's going on around us. Well, thank you, Paul and Gavin, for joining Patty and I on BioTalk, and we'll get you back real soon to talk about the next emerging issue that's for sure coming our way. Mm -hmm.